morning. It's Friday, July 2nd, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, The Eye on the Sparrow is Here Too. And our scripture is Jeremiah's seventh chapter. This is God speaking to Israel's prophet, Jeremiah. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Do not weep or pray for them, and don't beg me to help them, for I will not listen to you. Don't you see what they are doing throughout the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? No wonder I am so angry. Watch how the children gather wood and the fathers build sacrificial fires. See how the women knead dough and make cakes to offer to the Queen of Heaven. And they pour out liquid offerings to their other idol gods. Am I the one they are hurting, asked the Lord? Most of all, they hurt themselves to their own shame. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will pour out my terrible fury on this place. Its people, animals, trees, and crops will be consumed by the unquenchable fire of my anger. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Take your burnt offerings and your other sacrifices and eat them yourselves. When I led your ancestors out of Egypt, it was not burnt offerings and sacrifices I wanted from them. This is what I told them. Obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Do everything as I say and all will be well. But my people would not listen to me. They kept doing whatever they wanted following the stubborn desires of their evil hearts. They went backward instead of forward. From the day your ancestors left Egypt until now, I have continued to send my servants, the prophets, day in and day out. But my people have not listened to me or even tried to hear. They have been stubborn and sinful, even worse than their ancestors. I remember the time my father got so mad at me, I seriously considered getting my affairs in order. (laughs) It was my fault, not his. My mother was a sweet woman to whom I owe a great deal of thanks for whatever spiritual education actually got through to my dense soul. But sometimes it was at great cost to her. It was Thanksgiving, and that meant the extended family was coming to our house for the gathering and meal. Mom took the preparation seriously and wanted my help. I'm certain whatever help I could give could have been accomplished much more efficiently with less complaining in the air had she done it herself. But if there was anything she took more seriously than preparations for company, it was teaching her boys the responsibility of pitching in. I don't recall exactly how I complained about my assigned tasks, but... It was my early teenage years, and I'm certain that describes enough. My father found me sitting in the living room. With those steel blue eyes blazing, he said, You made your mother cry. Come to think of it, it wasn't the eyes this time. It was the set of his jaw and the clenched fists. My dad was using every ounce of restraint in his reserve to deal with his son's arrogance. Get up. Get moving, I won't say another word. And he didn't. He didn't have to. And the fact that at 74 years of age I remember that exact moment makes the point. I got the point. There comes a time when God's patience also runs out. God punished Israel for her arrogant disobedience. He told Jeremiah to forget praying for them. He was going to make an example of his disobedient family. Like my dad, but on a much wider and wiser and grander scale, God made his point. God's eye was on them, and he was not pleased. In the New Testament, we read about how the Apostle Paul warned the Corinthian believers that all the judgments of God that we read about when Israel completely disobeyed him was kept in Scripture for an example to all of us, a warning of how God reacts to those who would defy him. My mom and dad loved their children, and contrary to the somewhat distorted views of teenage rebellious values, their discipline was on the mark. 
The discipline we received was because our parents loved us and did not want us to wind up with less than valuable values. They were building men, not complainers. For you today, the God of Israel's discipline is still God. With the anniversary of the birth of this nation close at hand, I pray that as a nation and individuals, we will understand the connection of honoring God with our lives and not just our words. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.